Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? Doing very well. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so, for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So Paul Thomas Anderson movies, they always come out to a lot of anticipation from fans, from critics, often an Oscar buzz around them. How important was it for you to get a part in this film? I mean, it was one of the best things that ever, has ever happened to me in my life. Uh, you know, you can often feel quite powerless as an actor uh, pursuing your career because, um, y you know, y you're you're dependent on other people to hire you, choose you, the odds of getting picked, the odds of being right, the odds of having the same vision for the character that the director has is, are so slim that uh, when it happens, it's it's really a relief and really thrilling just with that, about any job then getting to have an opportunity to work with someone you admire so much, it's just, it's hitting the jackpot. What is it about his work that uh, you admire so much? I, I, love, I love how much he uh, gives to his audience and respects his audience. And, uh, you know, there's, there, his films are always um, surprising and unique, and he's just such a brilliant storyteller. And... And uh, so gifted in so many ways, I, I, it's hard to even name them all. You know, I just think he's, I think he's one in a million and, and so brilliant. And plus, um, visually, they're just, they're just always so rich. I love that about him. Yeah, and this film is very much in the same vein. Like, it's visually great, but yeah. it also doesn't sort of baby the audience. Like, you have to do a bit of work to uh, appreciate this film yeah i mean i think you can watch it in a lot of different ways yeah. you know and and people um have given me a lot of different uh reports of their experiences that have all seemed really interesting to me you know people who um you know really sort of leaned in and looked for all the pieces they could find and tried to understand everything and people who uh, had a great time just kind of letting it all wash over them and experience it and because it's see very what funny too up. yeah and there's yeah. it's just yeah there's so there's so much it's such a feast really yeah. well it's your character you know uh, Shasta who sets the plot in motion and kind of kicks off a lot of what takes place in the movie what was it that appealed to you about the character um I guess what struck me first was was her sorrow. You know, she she's she's she returns at the beginning of the film, having, you know, gone off to Hollywood to pursue, you know, a career in show business, and uh, comes back a little bit broken. Um, and uh, is that something that you can relate to based on your own experience? Well, I or? can relate to the struggle. For sure, um, the struggle is real. Yeah, it's it's tough and it's hard to kind of keep your chin up. And I, and I saw that in her, 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 uh, sort of having been broken down by it, but also still trying to, um, still trying to stay strong. And uh, and uh, and I was struck by her connection with Doc and 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 the, and the, uh, the romance, you know, between them and. Uh, yeah, I, there's so much I liked about her, and it was also just really fun to play um, uh, someone uh, so so cryptic and mysterious, and it was fun to have some secrets. Yeah, because it's definitely a character that's revealed through the course of the movie. So given that, how, how did you approach uh, portraying a character like that who's maybe not immediately understood right at the beginning? Well, it, um, I'm not sure. I, I, uh, I mean, I definitely, I enjoyed uh, keeping keeping a lot to myself uh, as as much as I could. I didn't tell Joaquin what I had in mind or what I was going to do because I, I, I didn't want to take that away from the scenes. You know, I wanted to try to keep as much of that electricity in the scenes and not. Um, sort of kill the energy by by letting him know what I might do and um and and even from Paul I, I also tried to 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 uh only tell him what I had to tell him and only ask what I felt I really needed to ask so that so that I could just feel that strong connection to to her um 
her her secrecy? Well, they're both talented artists, so I'd like to speak to you about working with each of them. But why don't we start with uh, Paul Thomas Anderson? You know, as a director, he's known for getting a lot out of his actors. You're sort of hinting there that maybe you weren't asking him, you know, for a ton of explanation on what he wanted from the scenes. But maybe can you just describe for us what was it like working with him? You know, uh, when 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 Paul gives you a role, it 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 really is what it sounds like. He actually gives you the role, and when right. he gives it to you, he leaves you alone with it. And that's I think a big part of why people love to work with him is because he respects the actors so much that they will do their job and bring bring the character to life. That's not his responsibility. He's got so many others to deal with, um, and and it's really. Uh, it's it's I think it's sort of galvanizing on set. Everybody feels so proud of the piece that they get to bring to 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 the um, puzzle or the piece of puzzle that they get to uh, um, explore. And uh, and yeah, he kind of he kind of leaves you alone. He takes a long time deciding who's right for the part. And once he does that, he he lets you do it. Um, and it's really freeing. So I understand the way that he came across your work was through the 2007 film, The Babysitters. That's right. Where you played a teenage madam. That's right. What did he say it was about that performance that caught his eye or that made made him interested in working with you? Oh, I don't know. He, I don't. He never really gave me too fancy a compliment about it. I just know that he he saw me in it and he he liked my performance, um, and and that's all I really know about that. Um, in terms of I'm working with him, did. though, like how how did he convey to you that you know you were somebody that he did trust with that sort of role, and for you to ex- explore it and expand it using your craft? I mean, I I think primarily simply by giving me the job. Uh, you know, his films are so wonderful; everybody knows that already. That is that's no surprise, and uh, and so you know the man has options, and he when he chooses you, it's it's so. It's so thrilling, and um, and uh, and you know, you know. I mean, I felt I knew that I had to, I had to, I had to show up and give it everything I had. Um, but yeah, he doesn't. There's no like um, mystery to. There's no like sneaky tricks he has that I that I'm aware yeah. of at all. You know, he just he just uh, he just respects his actors and lets them play. Hmm. Well, let's talk about uh, your co-star. You know, Joaquin oh, Phoenix yeah. is getting a lot of praise, and it's well deserved. Like he's he's funny, and he's kind of clued out sometimes. But then yeah. there's also scenes where it hint they hint at like a, a, a depth yeah. or maybe a darkness in the character. Mm-hmm. Like it's a very nuanced portrayal. What was it like for you to work with him? It was the best. You know, I mean, I I joke with Paul and Joaquin that they made my dreams come true and ruined my life because it was all in one fell swoop, you know, because it was so much fun to work with them. And now the bar is so high. I mean, it it just, it makes it so much easier and and so much more exciting to work with people who are bringing so much to the table. And Joaquin is just so inventive and playful and open-minded and, uh, and, and so adept. I mean, he can just, he can communicate so much with the with the you know littlest like movement of his eyeball you know he's just a freak genius and so yeah it was I kept expecting to be intimidated but uh but it was just so much fun that that the intimidation never came do you really worry though that maybe other roles that you take on in the future or other projects are not going to match up to this film no, I, I mean no. I'm so happy. I'm yeah. not. I'm not too concerned. Um, but you know, there is that. There's. There are those certain projects that you know are, um, are rare. And, and this is one of them. Yeah, and I just you know I try just trying to embrace it and enjoy it while it was happening as much as possible because I knew how rare it was. Well, one thing about Joaquin Phoenix that is reported quite often is that he uses the method approach to acting. And that apparently when they were shooting Walk the Line and he portrayed Johnny Cash, he had everyone on set call him JR. Mm -hmm. Did he use that same sort of method uh, approach on this film? Well, I, 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 everyone, everyone call, everyone on set called us all by our character's name. So I didn't know, I don't think that that was a request that Joaquin had. I think that was just something that they do on Paul's films. And, um, you know, 
it's just, it's so tricky to stay focused on set because there's so much happening all the time. Uh, uh, I find it useful to stay as much in, in the zone as possible. And I, and I think that's true of walking too, but you know, it's not like you can't say, what are you going to have for lunch or something? And he's like, oh, no, no, don't sit, don't Pulls talk about lunch because it's, it's technically <laughs> 6 p.m. In the, in the movie and we have to pretend it's dinner time or something. You know, yeah. it's nothing like. Okay. But you do that? You try like and that. stay in character as much as possible? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not it's, it's just to stay focused, just because you stop and start all day, you know. I think one of the reasons non-actors are fascinated by that because it seems like a little absurd, right? That you're continuing to inhabit this character even when the camera stops rolling. But can you take us into why, as an artist in that profession, that it's important to do that? Uh, I think because what we're doing is actually what's really absurd, which is pretending to be other people. And if you get it in, and if you get it in your head that you're you're faking it all day, that's that's the worst thing that could happen. So it's, you know, whatever you have to do to feel um, free and to have the permission to inhabit that character, it, it feels necessary uh, to do the, whatever that is. And some people uh, don't need to be called by the, you know, their character's name, so they don't need to do any of those tricks other people do. And I think whatever it takes to feel like you're in that world when the camera's rolling is what you've got to do. So... I don't know. I, I, I didn't ask for it, but I, I really enjoyed being called Shasta all day. You know, it's just then when you get called that name in the scene, you turn naturally. It just, you know, um, my stomach's going <laughs> crazy. <laughs> um, but, you know, you just, you, uh, it, it only helps for me anyway. I thought it was helpful. Yeah, I can see how that yeah. would. Yeah. So one Plus scene. with a name like that, you want to be called that as much as possible until the you know it is shoot cool is name. over because it's so lovely. Yeah, Shasta Faye Hepworth, man. So one scene that's getting a lot of attention, it seems to be mentioned in every single review of the film, is this intense nude scene that you have with Joaquin Phoenix. How much did you worry about that scene as you were heading into it? Not at all. Actually, I didn't worry about it at all. I was really excited mm. to do that scene. I thought it was so brilliantly written and so complicated. There seems to be so much going on there, and I, and I, and I was eager to to do it. Um, you know, actors are weird people, and uh, what um, might seem like someone else's worst nightmare actually a kind of standard anxiety nightmare people have, which is yeah, showing up somewhere without their clothes on, uh, you know, it's just, um, can be what's really uh, interesting and, and exciting to do as an actor. Um, I was so, I was so connected to Shasta and liked her so much and, uh, wanted to, to honor her and play her truthfully. And I thought that being comfortable in that scene was essential to that. So I, I was comfortable in that scene. Really? Yeah. And the, is that something Well, did that I not you, seem comfortable? No, the scene is powerful, but I'm just curious, like you as the person inhabiting the role, is that something that you had to work towards? Like that you had to kind of psych yourself up? Okay, I'm going to be comfortable. Or is it something that... Mm. No, I mean, in a way, natural. it's one of the great luxuries of being an actor is that you get a break from your own neuroses and uh, and and the the little nagging, you know, thoughts that run around in your mind. Generally, you know, you get to get a little vacation from them. It was my job to not at all be concerned with myself during those minutes of that scene, so I wasn't focusing on myself at all. I was focusing on her and trying to be her, you know. So what are the things that you're taking a break from? Oh, my God, just a litany of neurotic thoughts that I'm, you know, are always running around in my mind. Yeah, and ironically, that's what's dealt with in a lot of the movie, though. It's things like paranoia. Paranoia. It's things like the little anxieties sure. and the insecurities of the various characters. Yes, but I don't know. I mean, I think I just sort of am a kind of... Uh, you know, in New Yorker, you know, at heart, and and I was playing a girl from Southern California, so I was just trying to get some of that kind of, um, you know, hypernotic overthinking out of my system while I was shooting. You know, right. Well, the scene has been praised by many of the reviewers, but there's also been some pushback. You know, Entertainment Week Weekly said that it was gratuitous and out of place. BBC critic wondered why the scene was even in the movie. What's your response to that sort of criticism? 
Well, I don't read criticism, so I try, <laughs> try to not. Well, I, I hate to <laughs> be the bearer of <laughs> bad know. news. Well, no, I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I, I, I certainly wouldn't have even done the film if I thought that it was gratuitous. Um, and, but it is, it is a surprising scene, and it does really stand out uh, from the tone of the rest of the film, and it stands out that way, I believe, as well in the novel. Um, and, and I... I think that what that's where its power is. Um, you see that uh, the the hold that she has on Doc is unusual, and it's not something that uh, looks like anything else in his life. And I thought that Paul really illustrated that very well in the way he shot the scene and the way it feels. It does. It really. You know, I've heard audiences sort of gasp when it when the scene starts because they're they're not quite prepared for it. And isn't that isn't that an exciting thing as an audience member to get to experience surprise? It doesn't happen too much anymore, and I don't know. I'm all for it. I, but, you know, I'm biased. I love Paul's work. So. Do you think maybe they didn't get the movie if they lodge a criticism like that? Well, I like to think that. Yeah. <laughs> so switching it up, you know, you come from a family that's somewhat... Well, very much in the industry, I guess you could say, you know, your, your dad's well-known actor, Sam Waterston, who many listeners will know as the DA in Law and Order. Um, your mom, Louisa Lynn Woodruff. Was uh, scratch that, reverse it. <laughs> Lynn Louisa. Oh, sorry, my bad. It's okay. Lynn Louisa Woodruff, uh, famous model from the 70s. How do you think that that family background uh, helped prepare you for the rigors and challenges of being a, an actor in Hollywood? You know, my whole family, they've just been so incredibly supportive, um, and uh, you need that. You really do need support when you're pursuing a career in the arts because it's so competitive and challenging and often discouraging. Um, but, uh, you know, getting to be on sets when I was a kid and, and now as an adult, you know, just being able to talk to my father about scenes I'm working on or characters I'm working on, it's just, it, it continues to be... Um, I just really lovely and useful to me, you know. Uh, but I don't know how having those particular parents prepared me for it because I don't have anything to compare it to, you know. They're the only two folks I have. Um, but they were pretty, they were pretty great at being parents. So, yeah, I'm lucky. That's awesome. Yeah. So a role like this and a film like this, it's certainly going to open doors or lead to other opportunities. What do you hope comes out of this? Where where do you see yourself going next? I'm um, hopefully to eat a meal because my stomach <laughs> is growling so much. I'm sorry. Um, you know, uh, it's a sort of boring answer. I feel like it's what most uh, most actors want, which is just to continue to be challenged and uh, work with people that you think are smarter than you. You know, I mean, it's it's uh, it just is more interesting that way. Mm. Um, but I don't have any kind of specific schemes. I haven't, I haven't done a play in a couple of years and I used to do a lot of theater. Um, and I really miss that. So I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to get back on stage sometime soon. Hmm. Well, thanks so much for speaking with us today. I really enjoyed. Thanks the film. so much for having me.